So I did a preemptive strike on her spirit. Even though I don't, have, I don't have the gentility, I walked in it. I know my pastor. And so I said, praying, I said, well, let me borrow a little bit of it. I'm not to, speaking in his ear to make it a legal exchange and taking something from him that he actually, that God has actually worked through him with. I'm, God, I'm not doing what was done to me, right? I'm saying I'm underneath my head. That that man is a, the head of the church, right? And he is underneath the head, uh, which is Jesus Christ, right? He's got the gentility. Right? If it was an apple or orange, he was a, and I needed to eat, he would loan it to me. I know that he would. He's got the gentility. I need to speak to another part of the body. And I don't need them to leave the church. I need them to stay at the church because God has a work for them. God has his will for them. And they just need that what they did was not bad. It was the attitude that they did it in. And I don't pull punches. So I told them about themselves. I know God is not working on me. <laughs> But I said, if God has given me peace shoes, then I'm going to keep walking in them. So I did what the Bible tells us to do. I sent the message to her and Pastor Tim. And I said, this is something that we all are working with. I said, but the, the pastors went on a retreat. I said, they're calling us up higher. I said, they need to come, us to come up higher. I said, I need you to come up higher. I said, will you go higher with me? Let's, let's do this thing. Let's make a deal. Let's go higher together. Now, I have involved Pastor Tim in it. And any time you make a two situation, a three, you bring in the Trinity. They could not stay out of it. They were not shouting over it. Hallelujah. Her response to it was insane. She was so receptive and happy. I said, now I see God. I said, all I've got to do, because I have to have a way. People, people cannot, people not, will not be able to handle the fact that I am still in trauma and tragedy and not yet well and so what I need to do to protect myself especially God I need a way to keep pointing at you so that you get the glory right but so that I right so that my story and myself are not touched or affected because if I'm not careful and I am involved in too many situations or too many bad things right now you will see me in the hospital I said, I want to be an intercessor for my pastors. I want to stand behind them and push them forward. Higher for the three, right? I'm just a, I'm just a um, equipment manager. <laughs> but I'm happy to be it. The equipment manager is the worst treated, the worst like person of all the bunch in, on the team. The equipment manager is still on the team. The person on the team, guess how you know? Because they have a uniform. When they, the, way the team gets dressed, they get dressed. If they're there, if the other team is there and they are there, they have to get dressed because they are on the team. However, however, how they are treated and what's left behind for them to pick up the excrement that they have to touch, right, is something totally different. I said, I'll be that, I'll be that, I'll be that, right? Because if, if Pastor David is oozing gentility juice and David Lewis, David Lewis played every instrument in the world. I, 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 I mean, he's just ridiculous. So, <laughs> he played every instrument. He show off too. So, <laughs> I told him, I was like, you're a prodigy. He said, no. I was like, no, you are. I'm not asking you. God said he was a prodigy. God said he, made, he was made like that in the womb. And it was a fight. I, I, I can't go into it because his story is epic. I know some of his story, but he don't know this part of the story. He's a prodigy. But some people, are, some people, they are so blessed, but they are even nervous about speaking it about themselves. He's not dumb, though. David Lewis is one of the smartest people in the world. <laughs> He's scary. <laughs> But Pastor Tim, what, 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 what juice is Pastor Tim oozing? Hi, y'all. I can't even do his voice anymore. Hi, y'all. Yeah, you gotta add that raspy. Hi, y'all. Just like that, you gotta add that little, eh. Hi, y'all. Yeah, just like that. I got it, I got it. A little country bunk in Nashville. Hi, y'all. Yep, just like that. <laughs> I got Pastor Tim. I can do an impression. So he oozing just, he oozing happy juice. It's just, ugh. Just so sweet. Make me sick. <laughs> I'm sour. I'm Jamie. I'm sour. I'm going to be sour sometimes. But I'm just going to be sour for no reason. You'll look at me, Jamie, why you sour? Because I am. I'm a lemon. I really am. I'm happy. I'm happy all the time. But I'm sour. Like, I'll just look at you like, uh, shut up. <laughs> See, but, uh, ugh. I'm a hater. I am. I'm professional, though. I'm professional. All these pastors are oozing things. If you mind your business, Jamie, and get your life straight, you need to look at each one of them, talk to each one of them, and find out what they're oozing. Last note, uh, cause Miss Amy's, you know, choosing to come. But, uh, last note, um, I was watching, uh, Henry Danger, cause y'all know, 
out of all the, it's not a cartoon, but a, a kitty show if I just see, I call it a cartoon. Cause stupid. So anyway, um, Henry Danger, right? He's, you know, he's with Captain Man. And, um, Toddler comes in and Toddler knocks them both out with a gas. Now, how did Toddler even get in a, a basket, like a fruit basket, or whatever? How did Toddler get in the man cave? Anyway, it's supposed to be the secret hideout. Like Batman, he got a secret hideout. The man cave is Captain Man and Henry Danger, uh, Kid Danger's secret hideout. Well, the, the basket is downstairs, so Captain Man and Henry Danger, they come back from fighting a battle. And they get up to the screen because they're going to check something from the screen. They're going to look up for Dixie Chick's phone number or whatever. Because it says on a thing that the Dixie Chick sent them the basket. So they beep, 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 things. And all of a sudden, the gas starts spraying. And Henry says, what's up? What, 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 what up with the gas? So it, Captain Man didn't do it. So he's like, I don't know. But you should smell it first. And Henry was like, but you're in, in destruction, destructible. Captain Man is one of the most selfish <laughs> Selfish people in the world. He's like, but Ray, you're ind indestructible. He's like, but I'm not smelling that. It's a gas. I don't know what it smells like. So you should smell it because you got a young nose. <laughs> so, so how about we all both at the same time? Wait, we'll taste it a little bit. Hold our nose. Da, 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 da. It's really, uh, okay, we'll smell it at the same time. One, two, three. Wait, I smell it. You just smell it. You know, they're just going, going back and forth with this banter that they do. Banter. Before you know it, they're both knocked out. <laughs> like, like two like kittens. They're both knocked out, laying on the desk. So Tyler jumps out and he traps uh, both of them. But the, the main thing, the main thing was that Captain Man was trapped in a sweat machine. Tyler calls it a sweat box. Now, Jerry thinks, okay, he's defending Captain Man. That would have been like me, like, you know, uh, Pat, yeah, but Pastor David threw a whole bunch of people on Tom. He could take a whole lot more. Uh, that would have been me talking crazy. Because cause what Tyler did, he said, okay, I'm going to turn this up to 100 degrees and we're going to make you sweat. Because the point was, Toddler understood something that we don't. Toddler's, Toddler's whole point to breaking in the man cave was to get to Captain Man, not Kid Danger. He just had to put Kid Danger somewhere and, so that Kid Danger won't bother them. So uh, he actually made a trap inside of the basket that he was putting in to, to encase Kid Danger. So Kid Danger looked like a little baby standing up in his, pie, in his big basket. But he was standing up in the basket, but he could not get out of it because any time he touched the edge of it, it was like the sports field. Well, we're, it's, I'm going into, going into, going into too much. Okay. Captain Man in a sweat box. Now we have the background for the story. Toddler understands something that we don't, right? Toddler said, I'm going to turn this up to 100 degrees. Henry said, you stupid, because if you turn it to 100 degrees, Captain Man has been in worse situations like that all his life. He can take much more than that. And Captain Man is waving his hands from his neck, like, you know, you wave your hands and say, no, no, no. And he's like, you stupid. Captain Man can take much more hotter temperatures than that. Are you crazy? 100 degrees? You should turn it up to 300 degrees. And he just, Captain Man just looked at him. <laughs> and so, and Todd was like, you're right. <laughs> so he turned it up. So he turned it up real hot. And he said, "Why are you making it hot?" He said, "I'm gonna make you sweat." You know, but what, the funny thing about toddler, let me explain that. Toddler is his name, but he'll drink baby bottles. He wears a diaper. Like I mean, his 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 cave is full of. It's like a a fun house, but it's a fun house of like dangerous situations if you fight him there. So anyway, there are times when toddler talks like a baby. So he's kind of like he's holding his tongue to the roof of his mouth so he's like yeah like he, he talks like a baby but there are times when he forgets the baby in him and he starts speaking like a human so he's like yeah I'm gonna make you sweat it's like his voice just switches so I've been watching the show for years so I know oh yeah that's his voice is just switching you know like I understand it because toddler doesn't realize it because toddler doesn't realize it because toddler doesn't realize it because like Pastor David gotta keep saying it over and over again to me because toddler doesn't realize it because toddler doesn't realize it because toddler doesn't realize it toddler is a grown man but why are you calling yourself a toddler he calls himself toddler that's his that's his name Captain Man his name is Captain and his name is Ray Man Manchester, but his, uh, his superhero name is Captain Man. So when he's, even when he's fighting Frankini, he says that he's like, he was like, um, Frankini's like, can you do a really deep note? He was like, please, my name is Captain Man. I got Captain inside of my man, and my name. Captain Man knows who he is. So his attitude follows the altitude that he's been set to reach as far as the longitude goes. He's been set to go straight up. He will never find Ray Manchester or Captain Man being insecure about anything. Ray Manchester knows who he is. And that's why Ray Manchester gets more. Right? I know who I am. Thank God for the P and the peace. 
Because I told you I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I have a hard time dealing with, with, with P things. But it's funny because I'm a poet, a painter, right? And then, and now I have this peace thing. God don't play. There's a reason why he does things like that. We got, I said, can I change my name? He's like, sure, you can do preacher poet, but that's it. So I did, I, that's what I did. And I got this peace thing going on. If patience ain't next, I, I'd be surprised, right? Remember, the point is, no matter what you have, you have to know who you are. Is Captain Man immune to everything? No. He has a power. He has a, um, invincible, not invincibility, yes, uh, uh, indestructibleness. He is not, um, and, and he has no, um, like, um, a super immune system. He doesn't have that. He can't get sick. But so immune system, a great immune system goes on with it. But he does not, that's not where he, um, his power lies. The thing is, when they did get sick, when they had green fingers, it was the episode where Schwab made a disease. You found out that Captain Man could get sick by biological, um, chemical diseases that were created, but he couldn't get sick by what was going on around him. He couldn't be infected and infected and killed uh, slowly by the, like the rest of us can. Either way, either way, you are a superhero, right? And you didn't know, you need to know that the spiritual gifts that you have in your life are your superpower. The only reason why God is giving me peace now is because of the fact that I put stand up and I put no who I put ma'am, right? I ain't tell, let nobody tell me I, I, that, um, I ain't got put what God put, uh, assigned to me. What did Pastor David say? Our scripture. That's me and Pastor David's scripture. What? What? I told y'all I'll let y'all borrow it, but y'all gotta give it back. It's a borrow situation. Philippians 1, 6, uh, being confident of this very thing that he has, who has begun a good work in you, shall perform it. So the one that is performing it, gave me a piece, right, for my per life, right, because I'm a per poet, a per painter, right, I'm a preaching per poet, right, that's who I am, and nobody can take that away from me. Now, I do not like wet per pennies, nor do I deal with pe peacocks, or, I, and I'm very afraid of potatoes. That's just the way it worked out. By the way, it's in me stupid. He ain't got no hold on me. He's stupid, prepared. <laughs> Back to the sweat box. He's sweating. It's starting to pick up. Then Tyler finally tells everybody why he wants Captain Man's sweat. He's putting in his little bottle. He created these machines, both of them. He trapped Kid Danger, but Kid Danger wasn't who he was coming after. But he trapped Kid Danger because he knew Kid Danger, if he wanted to, could have beat Tyler. And actually, he gets broken out first, so he does put Tyler on his back. But his focus is on Captain Man. He said, I'm going to make you sweat. So there's times that he remembers, right, who he is, right? So his voice, voice drops a little bit deeper. And my assumption, my assumption is, is that he, um, he develops an Adam's apple? I don't know. What happens when a boy's voice changes? Because, yeah, that's how he talks. Yeah. I was doing that, but yeah. And all of a sudden, he's like, yeah, I'm going to make you sweat. you got to watch it because that's exactly how he sounds. That's how he sounds in my head. It's odd because you always watch the story is about um, Captain Man and Kid Danger, so we're always watching the story about around them. And then whenever Tyler comes in their um, their little universe and around them, you see him going through this voice dropping thing. I don't know that the voice dropping is because he's around Captain Man, but what I do believe is there are times when Tyler forgets who he is, and if he will forget just long enough, uh, God help me to forget just long enough, uh, right? Don't let me be around people who remind me. Help me forget just long enough uh, who I see myself to be, who I am. Teach me how to forget God so that I can see you. Teach me how to remember God. When they say do this and remember some me, okay, I like that, right? I want to remember God because that's what it means, do this and remember some me. But there's some things about Jamie that I want to forget. So I want to forget who Jamie is just long enough so that the baby voice will leave and the grown woman voice will take over. Because when I suffer, I cry like a baby. Who's with me? He said, I'm going to make you sweat. And he took that sweat once the vial was filled. And you know, you know, you can see where this is going. It was the most disgusting thing in the world. And we, we as people know that's not what's going on. But he took, as far as we know, the bottle and drank it right in front of us. And everybody was like, ew. And even Captain Man looked was like, ew. And he said, ew. It was just gross. He only drank half of it, though. Because there's someone else in the man cave and he didn't know it. 
We're going to stop there, right? Because I feel like the picture has been created and we understand why. What if I took each one of my pastors and I put them in a sweat box? I need to make you sweat. I'm going to make you sweat. David Lewis, I ain't going to say it like that because that's creepy. I creep myself out, made my back itch. But, uh, but here's the thing. Uh, 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 David Lewis, I'm going to make you sweat. And I have. I dri- I've driven him crazy. I told y'all we had these explosions, TNT, right? Because I was the powder cake and he was the fire. And we, and I, we have these explosions. I made him sweat. I'm a, da, 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 da. Pastor Trent, I'm going to make you sweat. I'm going to make you work for every pastoral penny you got. I'm going to make you work, p- work for every p- pastoral p- p- penny you got. But I, I'm going to make you sweat. To Pastor David, you're going to wish, p- wish that you had not signed that p- contract <laughs> to p- work with Tri-State. I'm going to make you sweat. No, he makes me sweat. Seriously, I'm starting to break a little sweat right now. He makes me sweat scary. <laughs> He's a little scary. So anyway, but I'm going to make you sweat. To, what if we take our pastors and put them in a sweat box? Now, mind you, we, us put them in a sweat box means they're definitely putting us in a sweat box too. That means they get to expect things from us. That means they get to ask, uh, uh, what have you done with God this week? Well, they can ask us to do things that are outside of our comfort zone, right? I'm going to make you sweat means that you get to sweat at their hands too. They get to make you sweat because they want to see you grow. They want to see you come up higher. They want to see you grow spiritually. That was the thing with, uh, the lady I was telling you guys about. I, blah, 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 blah. I beckoned her, right? I beseeched her, right? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable of the God, which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the manure of your God, that mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. I stutter a little bit because my nose is stuffed now. My nose always stops up when I do these things. But with her, I called on her to come up higher, right? I beseeched her, right? So I put her in the sweat box. And I didn't babysit the box. The pastors babysit the box when we're in it. I didn't babysit the box. I walked away from it. Because it's her job, and mainly not even her job, it's, it's God's job to make sure that she cooks it up so that enough sweat is produced so that it's off of her skin now. It's out of her skin now. She sweats enough, right, so that the next person will have something to drink off of. I'm going to make you sweat. It's God's job to make sure that the production quantity is met. It's her job to make sure that she comes out with the right attitude to reach the altitude that God has longitudinally set for her. I'm going to make you sweat. And what happens with this, when I pray enough, when I reach out to God enough, that I ask God enough, that I ask God enough, that I ask God enough, that he ends up putting me in the sweat box myself, right? Or I lay in the sweat box myself. I get a sweat box and I lay in it myself. I want to sweat. I go to my pastor, Pastor David, make me sweat which honestly if he just looks at me <laughs> and he's angry I'm sweating anyway I'm just being honest I'm not, I'm not gonna sweat I get sweaty it's nasty right nobody wants to sweat sweat stinks sweat smells like sneakers I'm gonna make you sweat but here's the thing sweat has a seasoning to it God just said it sweat has a seasoning to it and since we don't want to be like Lot's wife right she turned into a pillar of salt so we don't want to be like Lot's wife uh, alright being double minded being led out of the camp of Satan but we turn back and look longingly for look longingly at what we are leaving she cursed her entire line why because uh, as a result of that Ammon and Moab were birthed right as a lot's grandson and sons at the same time and as a result of them being born they were trouble to the Israelite community their entire uh, existence right the Moabites and the Ammonites but guess who was a Moabite he was part Moabite himself I'm gonna make him sweat he already sweated he was sweating in the garden of Gethsemane right didn't he he sweat in the cup he sweat around the cup he sweat before he Touch the cup and probably slipped out of his hands, right? Someone sweat on his hands. He sweat before he died for me. He sweat in the garden of Gethsemane. He sweat before he went to Calvary. He sweat before they come, came and picked him up. He was sweating on the rock. The rock, a solid rock was sweating on top of the rock that was placed there. I'm going to make you sweat. I'm going to make you sweat. My pastor don't have to tell me to sweat. I'm getting a sweat box ahead of time. I said that I want to, anytime Pastor David want anything from me, I want to come to him with it already done. Jamie, I need you to, here's your cup of sweat. (laughs) Jamie, I need you to, here's another cup of sweat. Jamie, we think we we want you to cook dinner. Here's another cup of sweat. 
I'm just having everything done before you ask me. <laughs> Dinner. Here's a cup of sweat. Why don't you drink that? It's a cup of sweat. You know? On everything ahead of time. Right? I don't want him to have to think about how can I best get her to do what I need her to do. If he asks me, anytime he asks me anything, the answer is always yes. I don't care what he asks me. The answer is always yes. He never makes me have to ask. Jimmy, I need you to sweat. Here's a cup of sweat. <laughs> Would you like a straw? Stop sweating the words. Stop sweating what people say. Stop sweating what's happening in the body of Christ. Stop sweating it. Stop sweating it. Stop sweating it. Stop sweating Biden. Stop sweating Kamala. Because the more people you sweat, those people you are worshiping. When you sweat people, you are worshiping them. Hallelujah to God. Sweat. Right? Let God make you sweat. Right? Let him take out what's inside of you. Right? Let him make you sweat. For I received of the Lord that which I have also um, done unto you, given unto you, that at the same night Jesus was betrayed, he took the cup. I don't know the whole thing and I don't know what the scripture is. I've been looking for it for years. I think it's in 1 Corinthians. That's what I keep feeling like it's in one of the Corinthians. One of the Corinthians. Maybe the lost Corinthians. One of the Corinthians. So it's three, it's only two. One of the Corinthians got it. They took it. <laughs> it's the communion scripture. Do I see that? I perceive of the Lord. How do you receive of the Lord? Right? Without to... Skin pal, skin cells exchanging. Well, they're being an exchange. And with God, it's never even yours. Get more than you uh, have taken from you. And yet still, he's sweating. God bless you.